I'd like to welcome you to the First Presbyterian Church of Arlington Heights and to the art installation, Sacred Stories, Images of Significance, Voices in a Congregation. This exhibition was inspired by a sermon by Reverend Alex Lang on May 24th of this year. And it struck me to my core because the request was for something I never heard for, from the congregation before. Alex asked us to tell our stories. And so what I'm asking is for every single person to give us one photograph, your most important photograph from your collection, whatever that is. And I want a hundred word or less description about that photograph. So what you're gonna see when you move into this exhibition are the voices in a congregation. And you're gonna see stories that are dramatic, some are funny, some may cause you to cry, many may cause you to wonder, what is the curator doing and what is this artwork? And hopefully, it makes you stop and think, pause, and ask a lot of questions. When you enter this room, this is the parlor, and it has a lot of tradition in this church. Now, the exhibit is not a photography exhibit. What it is is taking 230 photographs and their stories and use those as inputs and artifacts and artistic elements to create an art installation and exhibition. And when you walk around the exhibit, you're gonna see photographs hung in very strange ways, and you're gonna see photographs that are altered substantially from what was given to me from the congregation. And as we walk into this space, you're gonna see five meta narratives, five basic themes that struck me as I went through all of your stories. The first thing that jumped out and bit me in the face, and this is no surprise, but it was to me, family. I took, first and foremost, six very simple photographs that show couples and weddings. And not just couples and weddings, but the first you're just gonna see two couples in college. One looks like a selfie, but that was not a selfie, the black and white, it was taken in 1982. And the next photograph above it are two crazy college kids in a dorm room horsing around. That was taken circa about the same time. And the top photograph, the other black and white photograph of the Perkins, is not of young kids, but it's got as much passion in the kiss and the intensity of those faces together, which leads to the infants. And it's the pictures of just the infants' faces. So this whole wall is a pattern. It's a quilt of family. If you step back, you will see the geometric pattern. And from the infants, and in the center is not a photograph, it's an in utero ultrasound of the Larson's first child. And that story was the most universal of many that I heard. But what has emerged from all of my conversations with people who've come through is our family this congregational family, how we are a family, that are voices of a family, generations of family. So we have next the pictures of kids. So you see all these kids, and it's simply one, and one thing, joy. Look at them. You've got pictures of kids with muddy hands, and how many times as parents we've said, don't do that. It's pure joy for children doing what they like. And we also have photographs of children going back to the 50s and 60s, stories of lifelong friendships where people continue to act like kids. And then you get to the family, which is a column. And there are many times people are asking me, what's wrong with my eyes? It makes you stop because the pictures are purposely blurry. So this forces people to stop and then ask a question. What was the intent? What was the reason to make all of these pictures blurry? So now we move over to the next theme, which is mission. Mission, to me, was another major theme that jumped out. It's so important to this church. And it just rung out time and again in all of these stories. 
And first, look at all the children. What do you see? Think about the children on the other side. What do you see? Look at their faces. Something that you don't see in many of the adults. Pure joy. Next thing I want you to look at are the adults in the photographs. Look at their faces. What are they telling you? What are their experiences? Now we turn from a little bit more straightforward conversation. Now we move to the center of the room. This is the Sukkoth. This is the tabernacle. This is a representation being on the top of Mount Tabor at the moment of Christ's transfiguration. Because there were so many stories sent in about nature, being in the mountains, being in the wilderness, going on a spiritual wilderness journey to find oneself. Because when you enter the sukkah, you move from the green, the earth, the warmth, you walk in and then it's the redness of the Utah desert. It's fire. It's supposed to transform. And in the center of the sukkah is a podium. And on that podium are three volumes. And in those three volumes, every story with every image that was submitted. And we're going to add some more imagery above. We're going to add a third curtain, obviously for the Trinity. And that image will be taken from a photograph of Jerusalem and the Dome of the Rock. And as you exit the sukkah and you look at the mantle on the fireplace, you'll see photographs, nature photographs. And those are the images that inspired the artwork that you see that is the curtain of the sukkah and acts as the faux stained glass that we put on film in front of all the bookshelves with lighting behind it. Now we're going to go out to the narthex. We'll go out to the hallway, if you will. Uh, first thing I want you to do is look up and what do you see on the railings? And it's the symbol of Advent. Every Sunday we take off and reveal another part of this Advent mural whenever we light an Advent candle. And it's meant to be above everything else because on Christmas Eve we will have the final candle in the center above the entrance to the parlor. And then if you turn Behind you, you're going to see two monitors. And on these monitors, we're going to have four throughout the space. You're going to see videos. And we took about 30 to 40 stories. In particular, we lifted these out. Not to exalt anyone or over anything else, but particular stories, I think, that rung out with me based upon the intent going back to May 24th with that sermon in asking all the questions of what is a significant turn in someone's life, what makes a transfiguration or transformational, how do we move out of it, how does it define our possible future. And as you get up from the stories and you walk out into the courtyard, we're doing something very different and very experimental. And this is just an example of why this church is just remarkable to me. Because what struck me is another question. How do the physical ravages of time impact our images of memories? Just look out to the courtyard and just think about that. How do the physical ravages of time, God's environment, the climate, symbolically and real, impact our images of our memories? And you're going to see all of these images out here of people hanging from the trees. Now you're asking, you may ask yourself, oh great, what's going to happen to all this stuff if it falls? We have a plan. These images of memories, although they may deteriorate with time, they will not be discarded. And anything that falls, we will put in urns and we'll place there. And anything that's left will turn into art after the show. So let's walk over and see the gallery in a memorial prayer garden. What I think is the final phase of the show. And as you're going to find, it's quiet. There's few pieces. But it has all the elements of the show in it. That it provides maybe a summary and a ribbon around the entire experience of this installation. You'll see that there's another set of 
books with all the stories in them. And the to right is a video made especially for this space. You'll see some digital artwork of bright red canna lily flowers. Look at the colors, red and green. And think of lilies, but these are bold and inflamed lilies and the placement. And listen to the small clips and poetry. And hopefully this provides you with maybe a conclusion or an epilogue to what I think is one of the most significant things that I've done in my life.